our stage, a longtime member of the Cannabis Parade and Rally, and the legislative director of Empire State Normal, my friend, Mr. Doug Green. Thank you so much, Tanya. Um, and thank you all for coming out here. I don't know how many of you were here this morning for uh, Midtown in the cold and the rain, but uh, it's the sun has come out and is shining on us, so that is a good thing. So I want to ask a question. I wanted to know kind of why people are here today. What brought you here today? Cannabis, yes. Thank you. Thank you, thank you for being here. This man, Oleg, is a king of cannabis, one of the kindest, gentlest people I know. Um, I, I love him, man. I'm so glad to see him here. So, I mean, how many of you came here to party and have a good time? I mean, that's great. I, I did too, um, actually, though I have not ingested anything today. I'm waiting till after 5 o'clock in the after party and cleaning up. Um, so that's what I'm going to consume. Um, but there was a band, actually, out of New York City called The Talking Heads, and they had a song called Life During Wartime. And they had a line in there that said, this ain't no party, this ain't no disco, this ain't no fooling around. And it's really not. Um, you know, we could be here in the park and enjoying ourselves, but this is not reality. Reality is what's going on every day in the Bronx, in Brooklyn, in Queens, where there are people of color. Last year, in 2018, 81% of the arrests in New York State were of people of color, and that's mostly young men of color. Uh, those, those are the statistics. Uh, they're not going after people like me. They're not going after like suburban, white, middle-aged, legal, political professionals. People, people who look like me and have do the kind of work that I do aren't targets of the drug war. Um, I'm not really doing this for myself. I'm doing it for the people who are being criminalized every single day. Okay, I didn't know I was supposed to sing. Um, I, I really, I really can't carry a tune. You, you don't, you don't want me to go there. Um, so, you know, this is New York City, right? Are we in New York City? Are we in New York City? Are we in downtown New York City? Then my question is, why isn't this plaza like overflowing with people? It really should be. And I think part of the problem is that a lot of people have gotten too comfortable because people aren't getting arrested the way they're used to being. When my, my beautiful sister Cassandra was up here, she said that back in 2011, it was 50,000 people a year who were getting arrested. Uh, we used to say that's enough to fill Yankee Stadium. Now it's down to about 17,000, which is more like Barclays Center, which is still too many. That's 17,500 too many. But people have gotten complacent, and we don't have a lot of time. Um, I'm going to give you some numbers. 47. 47 is the number of days until June 19th, which is when the session ends. And this is not a surprise to my people, but actually at the end of session, I am stepping down as legislative director. I may be staying on the board of directors, but I am, as they say, pursuing other opportunities, whether that's being a cannabis commentator on network TV or doing reality show production or working for Ibogaine, um, which is the next big thing, which I think Dana Beal, who was one of my mentors in this movement, brought me into. I am gonna be doing other stuff. And I am so afraid. I am so afraid that we are not gonna get this done this session. And if that doesn't happen, that means we are dead in the water until we try and do it in the budget again next spring, which means it won't happen until April 1st. So how many of you have been to the back where our tables are, where Start Smart and Empire State Normal are? Has everyone been to the back? Because if you haven't been to the back, you're missing an opportunity to get really involved in this movement. And let me tell you, if we don't have everyone, everyone here and your friends and your family, and the people you work with, and the people you go to school with, and the people you worship with, this is not going to happen this session. We need a multicultural, multi-generation, statewide coalition, because even though 81% of the people who get arrested are people of color, there are white people getting arrested too. Steve Bloom, my colleague from New York, from, from, from the parade, who used to work for High Times, he got busted in a parking lot before a fish show at Madison Square Garden. There's a county upstate called Hamilton County in central New York. Very few people live there. 
44% of the arrests in Hamilton County are for cannabis possession. And that's mostly white people. So there's all kinds of people getting arrested. And if we don't have a coalition that embraces this entire state, from Buffalo to the East End of Long Island, from the Northern Tier to Staten Island, this isn't gonna happen. And if this doesn't happen, this means this report, this is a report that came out a week ago from the Rockefeller Institute of Government, which is one of the most Um, this is from the Rockefeller Institute of Government. This is one of the preeminent think tanks in New York State, based up in Albany, and they did a report about the economic impact of what would happen if it was legalized. And at the bottom range, this is the most conservative estimate, they estimated about 31,000 jobs and about $4 billion for the state of New York. $4 billion in economic activity. And that's the low end of the range. It could be as high as $60,000 and $8 billion. That's a lot of money. That's a lot of reinvestment in the communities that need it. So my question to you is this. Why are you here? I want to party and have a good time too, and I can't wait to do that after 5 o'clock. But I'm here to change the laws. I'm here to make a difference. I'm here for cannabis justice, and you should be too. And I think that's it. Please come talk to us.